the interior of some large hall in a town hall or other similar building. A woman, approximately 35 to 40 years old, wearing a grey plaid dress. On her feet, probably very translucent, flesh-coloured tights, and certainly black suede wedge pumps. The video below is dominated by the position of the assumed left leg on top of the right one. From time to time, the woman gently slides her left shoe off her foot. With the right, this practically does not happen. Record depth. They recorded the fish more than 8 kilometers below the surface of the water on video. Off the coast of Japan, more than 8 kilometers below the water's surface, scientists recorded a fish, a representative of the benthic beetles, on video. This is the record depth at which a fish has ever been spotted. It seems implausible that anything else could survive at such depths. And yet, exactly 8,336 meters below the water's surface. Scientists from Western Australia University filmed a juvenile of the genus Pseudolaparis, belonging to the benthic family. This is the greatest depth at which a live fish has been found so far. The fish was recorded in the Izuagasawara Trench. It may not be as famous and deep as the Mariana Trench, but as scientists say in the context of, for example, searching for interesting life forms. It is not necessarily only about depth. The fact is that both the depth and, above all, the pressure occurring at it have an impact on what the local biological environment looks like. Of course, temperature also matters here, and it is this last factor that works decisively in favor of the Izuagasawara Trench in terms of the life forms present there. Why? Well, this trench is by far the warmest of all record deep ocean trenches, so the chances that the biological life existing in it will be richer are higher. In relation to the Mariana Trench, this is a paradox because the waters above it are more tropical. Proximity to Antarctica is key here. The cold water coming from its vicinity first reaches the Mariana Trench. One more factor that favors the existence of life in the Izuagasawara Trench should be mentioned here. Well, into this ditch definitely more different types of material, potential food, than into the Mariana Trench. The researchers concluded that all of these factors taken together may contribute to the Izuagasawara Trench being able to harbor life at greater depths than other such locations. And they were not wrong. It was in the Izuagasawara Trench that a fish was recently encountered that took the lead in terms of life at the greatest depth. The previous record belonged to another fish, which in turn was found at an impressive 8,178 meters, in the Mariana Trench. And the one from the Izuagasawara Trench wandered even deeper. But first, a few words about how it got there in the first place. When the probe, equipped with a camera, reached a depth of 8,022 meters, it managed to film a fish of the species Pseudolaparis biliebi. And this was already a new depth record, but the research and exploration of these waters continued. And it paid off, for when the probe descended to 8,336 meters, it encountered another fish from the genus Pseudolaparis, referred to in English as snailfish, but of a hitherto unknown species. What do chemical elements sound like? Sounding, of the periodic table. The unique radiation emitted by elements under certain circumstances has been converted into sounds. So we can hear what each element in the periodic table sounds like. Although this concept has been implemented many times, technological progress has enabled a much fuller and more subtle voicing of Mendeleev's table. Using a technique called sonification, 
Light emitted by heated or electrified elements in the periodic table can be converted into music. A special program converts the light data of each element into sine waves, and then into sound, W. Walker Smith is responsible for, voicing, the periodic table of elements. He combined his passions for music and chemistry and, as he admitted, he was inspired to work by visual representations of the wavelengths of light released by the elements. He described his research at the spring meeting of the American Chemical Society. According to him, these works can be used as a teaching aid when learning chemistry or as an interactive exhibit in a museum. The periodic table includes elements such as He, Helium, Fe, Iron, and Ca, Calcium. For Smith, however, this was not enough and he wanted to add something new, specifically sounds to these often incomprehensible letters. So he used data sonification to transform the light emitted by individual elements into unique, poignantly beautiful melodies. The resulting sounds allow you to better feel the differences between the elements. The interactive musical periodic table is a novel way to learn about chemical elements while enjoying music. By using sonication, the visible light produced by the elements can now also be heard. The technique is an innovative way to study the properties of elements and distinguish them. With unique melodies, the musical periodic table can be used as a learning tool and a form of artistic expression. Smith is not the first person to transform chemical elements into sound. However, his work takes a more ambitious approach to conversion. Previous attempts have involved reproducing the spectra of the elements on a piano. But those melodies failed to capture the subtle differences between nearby wavelengths. Smith's method is much more complicated, specific sound frequencies are related to transitions and loudness. Smith consulted with experts in music and chemistry to create a rich and accurate soundscape that would allow the visually impaired to become familiar with the spectrum of the elements. The work may bring didactic benefits and have potential practical application in distinguishing metals whose spectra can be confusingly similar. In his shows entitled, The Sound of Molecules, Smith shows how the sounds of individual elements can combine. The lightest paint in the world has been developed. Scientists from Florida, inspired by butterfly wings, have created a new type of paint. Instead of pigment-based color, which requires artificially synthesized molecules, researchers have developed an alternative way to produce multicolored paints. The new paint is environmentally friendly and by the way is the lightest paint ever created. We associate each painting with the need to buy a large number of buckets or cans of paint, which of course have their weight. What if there was a much lighter alternative for them? The subject was taken up by scientists, and it seems that they have achieved great success in this field. The description and results of research by scientists from the University of Central Florida have been published in the journal, Science Advances, as a reminder. Traditional paints are produced using either organic or inorganic pigments. Especially the artificial ones are mass-produced. In order to obtain the right colors and shades, various metal oxides are used. The biggest problem in this context is that practically every color requires different materials. So producing a whole line of colors is really tedious work. What if we could somehow simplify the whole process? Just how could this be done? For this purpose, Scientists decided to reach for nature and look at how it is possible to create such amazing color compositions without using a huge amount of dyes. The result was what scientists called plasmonic paint. 
colorless aluminum and aluminum oxide were used instead of pigments. But where does the color come from then? The geometric structures of the material used turn out to be the key to answering this question. Light reacts to each of them in a different way and it is this method that produces different colors. With traditional paint, it is the pigment dye that controls how light is absorbed. Plasmonic paint obtains its color through the way light behaves in contact with it, how it is reflected, absorbed or scattered based on the aforementioned geometric nanostructures. Importantly, by eliminating the need for artificial dyes, we obtain a much more ecological final product. It turns out, however, that the plasmonic paint has another surprise for us. It reflects the entire spectrum of infrared radiation. What's the benefit? Thanks to this, plasmonic paint does not heat up as much as traditional paint. As a result, the surface covered with it remains cooler. The possibilities opened up by this property therefore seem enormous. Besides, this paint is also much more durable, because unlike the traditional one, it is not so damaged by the sun's rays. But this is still not the end of superlatives in which this paint can be expressed. While in the case of traditional ink, it is recommended to apply a layer of at least 9 mm to obtain the proper color saturation, in the case of plasmonic ink. Only about 150 nanometers are enough to obtain the right color. The savings in terms of the amount needed is therefore huge. To illustrate how big a difference we are dealing with. One of the researchers mentioned that while we would need only 1.3 kilograms of plasmonic paint to paint the entire Boeing 747, we would have to use as much as 454 kilograms of traditional paint. Unfortunately, the only drawback of this paint is its production cost. And that is what the researchers intend to focus on in the next step. Astronomers have discovered a monstrous black hole at the center of a galaxy some 2.7 billion light years away, lurks a cosmic colossus. British astronomers stumbled upon it. It is one of the most massive black holes ever detected. It has a mass more than 30 billion more than the Sun. Astronomers from Durham University have discovered one of the most massive black holes in history. The monstrous Colossus has a mass of about 32.7 billion solar masses. This ultramassive black hole was found by scientists through gravitational lensing. The newly discovered ultramassive black hole lies about 2.7 billion light years from Earth in the Abel 1201 cluster. It has a mass of 32.7 billion times the mass of our Sun. Scientists point out that it is in the upper range of what they believe is still possible in terms of black hole masses. But how did astronomers find a black hole? Albert Einstein's famous theory of general relativity comes in handy here. It explains how such massive objects bend the matter of space-time and how both matter and energy move under such conditions, including light. In practice, astronomers have the opportunity to observe the so-called Einstein rings, formed as a result of the so-called gravitational lensing. In the context of this particular black hole, it should be noted that the vast majority of such objects that we know exist are active. And the matter they attract heats up and emits energy in the form of either light or, for example, X-rays. However, in the context of finding those that are not active, the aforementioned gravitational lensing is useful. This is because they are much more difficult to track. Gravity warps space-time. The denser the object, the stronger its gravitational force. And when an object is as dense as a black hole, this distortion is so incredible that it acts like a lens, magnifying and distorting the light source behind it. 
Lensing occurs when light from a distant source is bent by a closer object called a lens. The mass of the lens curves the space around it, which causes the light rays to bend, as a result of which you can observe the brightening of the source. In other words, Gravitational lensing occurs when the gravity of objects bends and amplifies light from more distant stars when the radiation source, the lensing object, and the observer on Earth are aligned. If the lens is a star, the brightening lasts from a few to even about a hundred days, and if the lens is a planet, from a few hours to a few days. British scientists based on images of the Abel 1201 cluster taken by the Hubble telescope, on which the lensing phenomenon was recorded, found a black hole. Using simulations of the Dirac COSMA-8 supercomputer, they estimated the mass of the discovered black hole. It was found that this monster weighs as much as 30 billion suns. This also means that this black hole is also about 8,000 times larger than its powerful counterpart at the center of the Milky Way. However, it cannot be said that this new discovery is an absolute record holder. The largest black hole known to date, named Tun 618, weighs about 40 billion times the weight of our Sun. Perhaps the latest discoveries will bring scientists closer to a better understanding of how such giants form and reach such sizes at all, and how they can affect how the universe itself evolves.